Welcome to my American History Notes, where I discuss things I've learned from American history, things that, uh, and I'm hoping that you'll want to study these things. You might hear some names that interest you or some events, um, and uh, don't expect you to agree with my conclusions, or even you might be offended by what I say. But the point is, for me, is that you study American history. So we're going to start today uh, in 1850. Stephen Foster's song, The Camp Town Races, Going to Run All Night, becomes popular. American showman P.T. Barnum hires Jenny Lynn, the Swedish nightingale, to sing around America. In 1853, Foster's My Old Kentucky Home, Good Night, becomes famous. Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair debuts the next year. In 1855, Richard Milburn and Alice Hawthorne's Listen to the Mockingbird is published. In 1850, George Caleb Bingham paints Raftsman playing cards. He paints The Trapper's Return in 1851. German-born painter Emanuel Lutz paints the famous Washington crossing the Delaware the same year. James Abbott McNeil Whistler goes to Paris to study painting for four years and never leaves. He will paint the famous Arrangement in Black and Gray, The Artist's Mother, which is now known as Whistler's Mother in 1871, and Nocturne in Black and Gold, The Falling Rocket in 1874. In 55, Bingham completes Verdict of the People. Winslow Homer paints The Morning Bell in 1870. In that year, the Metropolitan Museum of Art is founded and will move to Central Park in 1880. Realist painter Thomas Eakins completes The Gross Clinic, Portrayal of Surgery in 1875, and The Agnew Clinic in 1889. He will be forced to resign from the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts in 1886 for using live nude models in his art classroom. Shocking, huh? Um, the New York Times is first published in 1851 under the editorship of Henry Raymond. The comic periodical Diogenes, His Lantern, publishes this for the first cartoon representation of Uncle Sam in 1852. The Daily News is founded in 1855. Using the name Artemis Ward, journalist Charles Farrar Brown publishes comic letters in Cleveland's Plain Dealer in 1858, sparking a comic career. Critic William Dean Howells writes lives and speeches of Abraham Lincoln and Hannibal Hamblin. The book wins Howells the American consulship to Venice, Italy. He writes in 1885, The Rise of Silas Lapham. Samuel Langhorne Clemens, known as Mark Twain, begins his career with the publication of The Notorious Jumping Frog of Calaveras County, the year the Civil War ended. In 1868, humorist Bret Hart publishes The Luck of Roaring Camp in Overland Monthly Magazine. The next year, Twain publishes his famous The Innocents Abroad. In 1876, he publishes The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. And in 1886, the sequel Huckleberry Finn. In 1876, Henry James begins publishing his novels. And the Harvard Lampoon, a satirical review, starts. James will be known for Roderick Hudson, The American Daisy Miller, and Portrait of a Lady. I'm sorry, Roderick Hudson, The American, Daisy Miller, and Portrait of a Lady. Twain will publish his autobiographical about his own life, Life on the Mississippi in 1883. In 1880, Joel Chandler Harris begins publishing his Uncle Remus stories, and that year, Lewis Wallace, Civil War general and member of the committee that investigated Lincoln's assassination, publishes the book Ben-Hur. You may have seen the movie with Charlton Heston. We'll stop there. We have many more people to talk about, people that shouldn't be forgotten, people that we should have a, a basic idea in our head of what they did. Um, important names in American history, inventions and publications, uh, things like that. I thank you for listening and watching. I hope you'll study American history, come to your own conclusions and find things that really fascinate you. Take care.